As a safety, when you're working on these trucks or you're working on anything, it's a really good idea to wear gloves. I'm of the old school, I didn't do that, but I've just started wearing gloves a little bit more often. The other thing is you should have your safety glasses and that prevents any damage to the eyes. Again, as we're working on things, safety is an important issue, so that's why the glasses are there. I'm just doing a demo on this one, so I'm just going to wear my regular glasses as we go across, but if you were actually working on a vehicle, you need your safety glasses. We're not underneath the hood. We're going to take some look at some of the components we have. First one, I'm going to check the power steering fluid. Just pull it up and look at the fluid. You might want to actually take a sample to make sure it's correct. On this particular thing, it's a little hard to get it on and off. Now, on top of this, also it's kind of unique, it actually has, since this truck is fairly new, it actually says fill the appropriate mark on the reservoir. So this one's going to use a mark on reservoir. There is nothing, there's no stick as you saw like some vehicles would have. So we have maximum fill would be right at this point. It also says that we're going to use automatic transmission fluid, Dextron 3 or Super ATF. That's what we're going to use in the power steering unit. That's what always should be used. As we move down from the steering box, we go down to the pitman arm. It's located here. This is spline to the uh, steering gear box, and we have you can see the splines in right in this area here. We also have on this one, we have a bolt that goes through that clamps it down here. Down below, that would be our drag link that would be hooked up with a cotter pin and a nut. That's what's going to take our suspension and move our steering arms. So those are the main components near the steering box that we need to look at. All right, there are two U-joints in the steering shaft assembly. One is up here at the top, and we have one at the bottom. So it's a good idea to check these. The one at the top is splined in to the steering shaft itself, so you need to be able to look at that. Look at this and see if you have any damage. That's something you should inspect on a regular basis. We're going to look at some steering linkage components right now, and it's really easy on the, the side of the truck. So the first thing we're going to go down and look at is the drag link. Drag link's hooked up to the pitman arm and goes across to the steering arm. The steering arm is bolted to the spindle assembly here, and below we see where our kingpin, our kingpin, and you notice we have a little bit of an angle to it, it's there. We also have our tie rod that are on the back side, they're bolted in, have a shock absorber, and we notice we have a spring here. And the spring on this one is a tapered leaf spring, so we know it's trying to move. As you taper it, it's going to change a little bit of its strength. We also can look at where the spring's bolted to, and we see the U-bolts. Now, when we were talking about adjusting the caster on a particular system, you would actually disconnect or loosen these components and slide that shim in there to get the proper caster. And you notice there's a little bit of angle on the axle itself right now. So these are some components we'd be looking at for checking for a suspension for that shimmy we talked about or other issues with the steering. We're looking at the hub assembly on this particular vehicle. If you notice, we have nice little standout here that helps center the wheel to the hub. We also have 10 studs on this one. The other thing at the same time, while you're inspecting this, you should be looking at the threads to make sure they're okay. Everything looks fairly new on this one. This is a fairly new truck. It's got a white wheel. Uh, what we say that you should do on a white wheel, you should always at least hit it with primer to make sure it looks good. Now, the other point that you're looking at on the tire, looking at that, we're gonna go over and look at the tire. It's a rib style tire. If you're looking at the center of this, you're gonna see a little mark there. So this thing's probably been aligned recently because they put a mark across the center of the tire and the center of the tire is how they're gonna set the toe in on this particular vehicle. So if you're looking at your tires, it makes a real good sense to look at them carefully, look for any damage, but also look for that center line to make sure it's good. If you were doing this and doing a toe in, you would have to mark that on your own. This one's already set up, ready to go. Now we're at the back of the truck and we have an air suspension, an airbag suspension on this truck. We have our device here that's going to be able to modulate the pressure in the system. Its job is, depending on this 
location of air is going to add or subtract air to the airbags, which are mounted at the end of the axle on both sides here. This is basically on a control arm, and it feeds in forward, so it's the end of this. Now, with the other thing, to keep the axle centered in the chassis, we have a bar that going across from here to an arm actually cast into the axle here. It is on both sides. So we have this one to the frame, this one to the axle. Its job is to keep this thing centered so that we can keep it aligned with the front wheels. Now, if you were doing some adjustments, you would be moving adjustments here. There are maybe some other components that you may be doing the length of the rod or other adjustments here if you're checking it. We would take the rod off. We would move it up or down. We could adjust the ride height to make sure it's working properly. So this vehicle rides at the proper ride height. Whenever we load it down, it's going to add air. When we ever uh, take the load off, it's going to subtract air. So you get that smooth ride or you get that nice ride, comfortable ride when it's loaded down. As you can see, we have airbags. This, this cab is mounted on airbags to make it a little bit easier for suspension. We have the airbags. We have shock absorbers on both sides, airbags here. We have an airline at the bottom. This is being fed off the secondary air tank on most of the vehicles. So it makes it a little bit easier. It gives you a smoother ride and adjust to make sure the cab remains level when going around corners. We have a little warning on the chassis here. If you'll notice the chassis on this one has bolts and nuts on this one to hold in components in place. A lot of them have rivets that would need to be cutted, but it, it says do not cut, weld, or drill the frame rails. Refer to Freightliner Service Manual 31 Group for it, uh, the attachment methods. In other words, if you're doing any repairs on the chassis, follow whatever the engineers want from the truck in the first place. So follow the service procedures. So you look over here, you're going to see the driven wheels. This is the back of the truck here. We're going to have the block tread for traction. Remember, rib tires go in the front, block tread goes in the rear. And you always want to, again, make sure these are equal height. If you look, they are fairly good equal height, and we've got the same style tire. So everything is looking good back here. If you look at the rear axle, you're going to see we have little marks here. That is our standouts to center the wheel. Got one here, there, over on the other side. That's the center of the wheel on the hub assembly itself. We also look at something else up here. We have this little dent in here. And we were talking about doing tracking on the vehicle. It said use the tram gauges to the center of the axle. That's the point that you want to use. So if you put your pointer, it's got to go into here to do the measurement. So you got to keep in mind that you're looking at the information. Again, everything else is here. If we look at the tread, we've got good nuts there. We've got good threads here on all this, so everything's looking pretty good here in the back. There's a little tip that you might want to know is in on newer vehicles, this is a 2019, they changed the connector when we went to HD OBD. Some of them actually have a mark on it, HD OBD, if it's mounted some places. Other places, it's green in color, has a different connector. That means you have to buy a new in for your tool so it fits in and communicates. It will be mounted, this one's mounted over in this area over here. It's gonna be mounted in several different places. Some of them actually have a plate on top of them that says HD OBD actually marked. Other ones won't. The other thing is while we're in here, you look at your trailer brake and your parking brake. And the other items are sitting up on the dash and if those are components there so you can have access that. I just wanted to show you where they were. They're not always going to be in the same place, so keep that in mind. You might have to look around to find them. I know I always have to.